Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about the seven things that, that I don't buy anymore. And we're gonna start with number one. The first thing I stopped buying was uncomfortable clothes. And for me, it's all, it's almost like I don't know if this is going to happen because my closet is consignment. I buy everything secondhand. I'm always online, just basically curating my closet. So I found myself ending up with things that just didn't fit very well, but I'm like, well, you know, I bought them. I should probably try to wear them. And I just didn't love the feeling. Like I can't show up my best self feeling uncomfortable or, oh my gosh, if I move my arms a certain way, I might rip this like silk little top. So I just stopped wearing stuff. I would either sell it or I would donate it and I would move on. So wearing something uncomfortable is definitely not a vibe or a mood. And I just found myself really wanting to be comfortable. And I feel that you can be more of your best self when you're feeling good and you're not feeling restricted or you're like, oh my gosh, I think this is going to like fall apart any moment. The second thing I stopped buying was things on sale. And when I say that, I'm meaning if you are just shopping online and looking for like you peruse the sale categories and you're like, Oh, that's on sale or Oh, that's too good of a deal to miss out on or what have you. I think you can get in a lot of trouble that way because that's when your closet starts overflowing with things that you don't really wear or want, but you bought it because it was on sale or it was so inexpensive. So for me, I stopped doing that and I have a list of different items that I am either replacing or I'm looking to upgrade or I'm looking to add into my closet as a staple. So it could be quarterly, it could be yearly, it depends on how you do your system. And then if those go on sale, then that's the time I'll buy them. If I can't find it on consignment, what have you. But just perusing sales, I think is a really, it's a slippery slope because you are just buying it because it's on sale, not because you really need it or want it. So I kind of switched that around to here's the list. Here's basically the outline. If I can find those on sale, I am very patient. I do wait and you know, if it pops up great, but I just don't just sit there on sale websites and what have you. Cause I find that to be really detrimental. The third thing I don't buy anymore is one hit wonders when it comes to clothing. And that means that something you're going to wear one time. It's so recognizable that you wouldn't want to wear it again. I have one top and pant that goes together from Carolina Herrera. It was actually from Wes Gordon's first collection, I believe from 2020 spring that he designed for her. And I actually had two pieces. I had uh, I had a dress that when I put it on Instagram, people were like, you look like a bumblebee. I'm like, that's fine. It is very dramatic and a little theatrical, but it was a off the shoulder little dress that was like tulle and it was yellow with black polka dots. And it was just, it was really funny. It was just a piece that draws attention like that. I would obviously, I never wore it. I just wore it for uh, social media, but I did sell it on Poshmark actually. That's a very good example of a one hit wonder. And then I have this other outfit. It has Palazzo pants. It is a floral design. It's yellow. The floral design is on the top also. I mean, it's very dramatic. I definitely think I could wear this to a brunch or to an event or what have you. I, I look at this piece as more of like my museum piece in my closet. I think that I'll always have this. It's just so beautiful. It comes from such a beautiful collection. So, but this is definitely a one hit wonder. So that was really my last purchase of a one hit wonder because it's just not functional. I mean, it just doesn't work. You want to have things in your closet that you can wear over and over again. You can pair with other things. You don't want to be limited to a pattern or to something that you're like, oh my gosh, I could never wear this again. I was photographed or everybody's going to be at the same party or what have you. So that's one thing I stopped buying. The next thing I don't buy anymore is magazines. And I used to have this very big collection of Martha Stewart magazines because I cooked a lot. I baked a lot. Her magazines were so inspirational. I mean, speaking of Martha Stewart, I used to record her um, segments on TV with a VHS tape. I mean, like I had all these VHS tapes, like all these stacks, I would date them. I mean, I just love them. So her magazines had this four course dinner in them and you could pull it out. And so of course I pulled them out and I would put them into another binder. I mean, I really got into this. So not only do I have the magazines, I have like her stuff in these, like these three ring binders, like all over the place. And one time when I was moving, my husband and I were moving into our next apartment together he was like, Oh, what are you doing with all these magazines? I said, Oh, I love these. These are my Martha Stewart magazines. I mean, 
I can't, I mean, these are, I mean, literally like from the years and the dates are all like organized. He's like, have you been moving around? Have you been paying movers to move your Martha Stewart magazines? I said, well, yes. Why, why, why wouldn't I? He's like, that's crazy. You got to get rid of these. I'm like, oh, I would never get rid of these magazines. He's like, you can't do this. I'm like, oh, I can sell them on eBay. And then I looked it up on eBay. <laughs> I mean, this is like 12 years ago. He's like, you're going to ship magazines. Do you know how heavy that is? I said, you know what? You're right. So I picked out whatever I wanted from the magazine and then I got rid of all of them. And I have to tell you, it's like less clutter. You don't realize how magazines just start building up and then you're like, oh my gosh, then you feel guilty because you're not reading them or you want to set aside time and you want to go through them. I mean, that never happens. It just never happens. So now I have everything on digital. I have the Apple News app and I pay $9.99 a month. I can have every magazine in the entire world, literally. I have town and country. I have Allure, I have In Style, I have Entrepreneur, I mean, you name it, across all different categories. So this is really wonderful. I don't have all the clutter around me anymore. I have it on my app and I can read them. They don't ever go away, so it's wonderful. The next thing I don't buy anymore, speaking of magazines, is books. And there's a little caveat to that though. If it's summertime and I'm gonna be at the beach and what have you, I will buy a book because I want to be able to leaf through it. I don't like electronics on the beach. I can't see, number one, like the sun's always hitting the screen wrong. I really don't love being on my phone or my iPad when it comes to reading because notifications come up or yes, I know you can silence them, but it's just the fact that you're like, oh, what, what, what does that word mean? Let me look it up. And you get distracted and you're all over the place. I don't like that. I want a, an actual book and I want to be able to say, oh, I lost it or I read it and I donated it. I love that. I love reading it and getting rid of it. So I don't buy books anymore unless that is the case. I do have Atomic uh, Habits is one of the books I do have right now that I'm reading. I did buy uh, Lo Bosworth's book recently, Living Well. It's a new book. I wanted to support her as a female entrepreneur. So there are a couple different books that I have, but literally like five. So I think that's like a really great thing for me. I don't want all that clutter around. I don't want to have the feeling like I'm not reading enough so I can't get through these books. You know, there's like pressure when you see them all the time. And so I, I just eliminated that. I can have an app on my phone also from the library. I recently mentioned that, that I have a free library app and I can check out, I think it's like 10 or 12 books for the month and for 21 days. And then I borrow it and it downloads and then it just goes away. So it's wonderful. It's a really great way to free up your physical space and your mental space. The next thing I don't buy anymore is outside of my color palette. So that goes for nails, that goes for clothes, and that goes for my makeup. Now I do push it a lot of the time with yellows and you know a lot of people are like, you can't wear yellow, you can't wear this, you can't wear that because you have silver hair and I'm like, I don't really follow those rules. So for me, I just really stay within the color palette that works for me. And I really learned what works for me as, now this is the seventh, seventh year I've been gray. I've done trial and error. I do push it with yellow. I love it. I love the yellow. I love how bright and happy it is. So I do wear that. I love pairing it with blue, but my color palette's really black and white and beautiful blue or that coral, or I just know what really works. I know what doesn't work. Um, I was recently on a photo shoot and when they pulled out the outfit I was going to wear, I thought, oh my gosh, they really don't know gray hair because this is the worst color, the worst color for someone that is very fair and has silver hair. I was very surprised, but that just really showed me that I know exactly what I can pull that's going to enhance, whether it's my hair, my eyes, my skin, what have you. That's really, really a great thing to know, ladies, is your color palette and to really hone in on what makes you feel the best. And if you ever feel like you're buying something, you're like, not sure, don't buy it because that's when you get into trouble. So just know your color palette, stick with it. That's one thing that I just stopped buying all these crazy patterns and stuff. I'm just not a pattern person. So I really learned that and it makes your life so simple. When you walk into your closet, you're like, oh my gosh, you have like this really peaceful, feeling because when you look at everything, it just all goes together. The last thing I don't buy anymore is tons of skincare. I just really keep it simple. I like to have three to four products. I like to use them. Then when I finish, I can either replenish them or I can buy something new that I wanted to try. But having a very simple skincare routine is a life changer. If you go into your bathroom for the morning routine or the evening routine and you have 20 different products, it's overwhelming and your skin is overwhelmed too. So if you pair it back, 
And you really think about what do I want to concentrate on? What are my skin goals? And start off very small and figure out, okay, here's my little collection. And this is what I'm going to use for at least six weeks or use until it's finished. I think a lot of women get very impatient because they don't give the products enough time to work. And then they're like, oh, I'm going to throw in retinol. I'm going to throw in this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do some micro home microdermabrasion. And then your skin becomes very overwhelmed, very reactive. I have just found that it's much more of a peaceful, enjoyable ritual at night or in the morning by doing just a simple routine and not getting overwhelmed and not trying to feel like more is better, more product, more stuff. Just really direct it to what your issues are and what you want to work on and then take it from there. But that's something that I stopped buying a while ago of just having too much. I think that I started feeling that way when I was doing a lot of research for 2022 videos and having to buy certain things and being really disappointed. And I'm like, okay, let me just stick to what I know and what really works because that that's where it's at, ladies. It's about finding something that works and really sticking with it and really watching your skin blossom and not feel like, oh, every time you see something, you have to add that product in or someone's using this, you gotta use that. I think that's a really great way to approach your skincare, especially as you're aging or if you've never used skincare before, to start out slow and then to build up. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of products if it works for you. I'm just saying I just stopped buying tons of products. I wasn't using them. I wanted to keep it very like curated and I wanted to see my skin really like change. And it wasn't going to change if I was adding all of these different products on it. So let me know if there's anything that you stopped buying or have you changed your routine? Have you done anything for 2023 that you feel is going to open up more space in your mind, more space in your environment? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. And until my next video, I'll see you later.